Or 13, use, okay, use the sum of the infinite geometric series formula to find the R. Sometimes they give you the sum and they want you to find the R. Okay? So that's how you do that. So our infinite geometric series formula looks like this. It looks like that, right? So think about what they give you. Here they said first term a sub 1 equals 4. Alright, a sub 1 equals 4. Sum of 10. Right? So your s, your sum equals 10. You need to find r. So let's see, sum, all right, so that's 10, equals a sub 1, which is 4, all over 1 minus r. Then I need to solve, right? So, you know, you have a couple of options here. You can make the other side into a fraction, too, and just cross-multiply, yeah? So you have 10 times 1 minus r. And remember, that's in parentheses to more than one term. So 10 times 1 minus r equals, cross multiply the other side, 4 times 1, which is what? 4. You can solve for r. You have to distribute. Minus 10R equals 4. Subtract the 10. So negative 10R equals negative 6. Right? How do I solve for this R? What do I have to do? So then what is that? What is negative 6 divided by negative 10? You take a fraction. So R equals 3. They give you the answer and they want you to find those parts. I mean, in this case, R. Find those parts. Remember, we're still using the infinite geometric series formula. Looks just like number 13. Think about what you know. Most of you are working. <laughs> Sum of 6. A sub 1 is 2. 1 minus r. And remember I said 1 minus r since you have more than one term. You can put parentheses around it, right? You can turn this into a fraction. Cross multiply. I'll do that over here. I have a little bit more ground. 6 times 1 minus r equals 2 times 1, which is 2. Distribute. Yes? Subtract that 6 out of there. Then you have negative 6r equals negative 4. Divided by negative 6. And then r equals two thirds. 
right? So when you guys are looking at series, all right, a list of numbers, and then you have um, a plus sign in between, right? You can use this notation called summation notation, all right? And this is written using the Greek letter sigma, right? And that means sum. Okay. Well, yeah, they use because they use Greek letters for fraternity and sorority. Um, but so it could be arithmetic or geometric. Okay, I just need you to know how to read this, all right, and how to put stuff like this together. You will see this on the answer list, all right. So you start off by putting your sigma right in the middle. All right, and then down at the bottom, you're gonna have a variable <coughs> n equals or i equals. I don't know why they use i sometimes, but it doesn't matter. N or i is just it's just a variable. I equals and one. This is the term that it starts with. It means that we're starting with the first term, the okay, first number, and then up at the top of the sigma. It gives you the number of terms, like where where it ends. All right. So it starts at one. Starts here. Ends here. Okay. So for this particular sequence, it starts at one and it ends at n, whatever that is. Could be five, ten, whatever. And then to the right of your sigma, right here is your explicit formula. That's where your formula goes. Remember how we were writing the rule for the nth term? That's what goes there. And we can make a rule. Uh, we can make a note for ourselves here. Rule for the nth term. Okay? So this is pretty cool because we can use this to write out our series, okay? And it can be geometric or arithmetic, it doesn't matter, all right? Look, this one is saying your formula is 3i, right? Because the formula is on the right. And it starts with the first term and it ends with what? 5. So that means the one, two, three, four, five. Okay? So what's my formula? Three I, that's where I plug it in. And this isn't recursive where the one before flows in. It's not. I'm going to tell you what we're plugging in here. formula is the same as that I. Okay? So, if my I is 1, then I plug in 1. If my I is 2, then I plug in 2. See that? We're starting with 1. We're ending at 5. You're basically just plugging in each of your N's, right? N or I into the formula. So what do we get? 3 times 1 is 3 times 2 is 3 times 3 3 times 4 and 3 times 5. Okay. So your geometric your geometric here, right? Series is 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15. Since they told you to write it out, you're just going to write it out like that. That's it. Not bad, right? So let's look at the next one. We start with what? A 
with number two. One, and we end with six. And we gotta plug it into this formula over here on the right, this guy. Remember, you're gonna plug it in for I, okay? So you have a one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's negative plus six. And, you know, I'm just basically going to write in all of these here. You're using the same formula anyway. So you could just fill it all in at first and then calculate. So what do we fill in? Write down the line. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Is it always going to be like that? Yes, for these. You're just plugging in the N is what you're doing. But instead of N, they wrote it as I. All right. All right, so let's calculate that. All right, so think of it this way. When you guys are done and you graduate, yeah. All right, well then, better get not bored of math than be in your life forever. All right, and there we go. We're just going to write it out. All right? Yeah, I guess we could put these in parentheses since they are. No, I mean. Oh my god, it is seven, it's not five. It is seven. Yeah, but why don't you guys say something? Yeah, that was wrong. Oh no, you know, and I was wondering, I'm like, that that's a weird pattern. How does it go from five to eight? I know, right? Check and make sure you guys are paying attention. No, but seriously, if I ever get anything that's different from you, please say something, okay? Alright, so let's look at this. Okay. So with this one, alright, so this one's a little bit weird. Because it's telling you to start at one, but end at where? Infinity. Infinity. Oh my goodness, so are you going to keep writing it out? Right? So, you know how you write this if it says infinity? If I were you, I would just do like three, maybe four. Okay, we'll do four. So, we have one half to the n minus 1, or i minus 1, right? All right, no mistakes this time. So one, two, three, Four, right? I'm only gonna do four. Since it says infinity, I mean, don't do two, don't do one. You guys, you could do three, but just do four. So what is this? Yeah, you get that one half to the zero power. Right? Now, anything to the zero power is always one. Oh. And put in your calculator. Put in one half to the zero power. Oh, I do one half. 
So since this is infinity, you would say one plus one half plus one four plus one eighth plus dot dot dot. That's the only thing that tells you that it goes to infinity. Dot dot dot. Pretty good, right? So I want to skip number four. I want to try number five. All right. So now this time, number five. Okay, it says write the arithmetic series in summation notation. All right. Oh, and six is not arithmetic, but just the number five here. It goes up by four. Yeah, it goes up by what? Four. So add four each time. All right. So remember, arithmetic means you have D equals four, right? A sub one equals what? Four. four. So you know what? You need to find the explicit rule. Remember, we need the explicit rule for this. A sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. A sub n equals a sub 1, which is 4, plus n, uh, n minus 1 times d, which is 4. Right? And then distribute. This is what we did on our first day of sequencing series. So you have a sub n equals 4 plus 4n minus 4. So if you combine like terms, what are you left with? Uh-huh. Equals 4n. All right, so this is your explicit rule. Okay? Now, think about this, guys. You have one, two, three, four terms that they gave you. They only gave you four, right? So this starts where? Number what? So then it starts at what? One. Term one, right? N one. Two, three, four. And it ends at where? Four. Okay? So I'm going to draw a little box here so I can write my summation notation. Got to write small, sorry. Or you can write it on the back, it doesn't matter. Now, here's what you need to do you're going to draw your E, your sigma, right? <laughs> okay, sideways M. So capital E. Three. So we're going to say, we can say N. N equals 1 because it starts with 1, right? That goes out the bottom. It ends with 4. And what is my formula? Oh, 4n. 4n. So that goes on the side. Yay, we're done. Yeah. All right. Okay. I got so much work done. Look at this. I want you to look at number six. We're not done. We just have to do number six and then we'll be done. I know it was so much today. Thank you guys. You did a really great job. Okay. Last one. Uh, so this one, all right, this one is not arithmetic or geometric, but do any of you guys see the pattern? Yeah. What? Four. Four. You only have a start from one and that seven terms, right? What, okay, well, what is the relationship between your N and your A sub N? 
What happens to the n to give you that number? It does increase. But look, you know. Exactly. So this one's a weird one. I did want you guys to see it in case they do show you something like this. Guys, if I did n squared, so if I said 1 squared, what do you get? 1. What's 2 squared? 3 squared. 4 squared. 5 squared. You see? Your n squared gives you that number. Yeah? So, this one, right, sigma, n equals, what does it start with? 1. What does it end with? 7. And what is your formula? n 